Are we live? <laughs> I think we're live. Yeah. Are we live, everybody? <laughs> so yeah, gluten abend, everybody. Today I have a special guest, who I think is one of the most awesome bread bakers to look out for right now, because Matthias, also known as uh, Fool's Crumb, is baking amazing bread, and he's going to help us today being a juror on the Show Your Bread show. Say hi, Matthias. Hi. How you Hello. Doing? Hello. <laughs> Loving bread. I'm a bread nerd. And um, everybody was able to submit a few breads. And what I've done then is I went through the top submissions based on the ratings, and I've included in a couple of them inside of the show. And we're going to have a look at them later and see how awesome they are and some possible feedback areas. But first, I need to learn more about you, Matthias. What made you start baking amazing breads like this one here, for instance? <laughs> how, 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 how did you get into that? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, it's a great honor. Uh, but I think it started about a year ago. Uh, I read this book called uh, Modernist Cuisine uh, at home. So it's like a common book for uh, every type of cooking, I think. And uh, I read up on, on bread, how to how to bake bread. I, I never did it before. So it was a yeasted bread uh, with some dry yeast. And um, I baked it, and it was, it was, it was nice. It, it was homemade bread. It's, it's great, right? Um, but it had this little, little section of, on the bottom of the page that said, you could actually make your own sourdough bread from this. Uh, because this recipe uh, involved Polish, which is a pre-ferment. So what you basically do is just mix uh, yeast and, and water and flour and just let it sit overnight. So that allows it to develop some, some great tastes. Um, so yeah, I just let it sit and kept feeding it for 10 days or something. And then I had my own sourdough starter. So it, it actually started from commercial yeast. And that, that's a discussion from, for another time, I think, because how, how is that even possible? <laughs> but it's definitely a sourdough starter. But yeah, I, so I started and I like I discovered uh, your channel and uh, Kristen who proof baking and just fell in love with, uh, with all the amazing bread out there. Um, so I, I started to take notes of everything I did and started to improve my breads. Um, and now it's it's a year year later. I baked almost 180 breads and I have notes from from all of them. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm totally addicted. So, and this is today, and yeah, still addicted. <laughs> so just to understand it right, from every bread that you're baking, you are taking notes. And what exactly are you writing down? Correct. So I I, I have I have the same recipe, the base recipe. It's it's actually it the the process is is uh, the same as uh, foodproof baking's her basic method. Uh, because I want to shoot for the stars and get like the most the best open crumb bread, right? Um, so it's just 20% uh, whole wheat, 20% uh, in inoculation, um, bread flour. Yeah, there you go. That's one of the breads. So experiment number 147. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, all everything. I think it's Adam Savage that says the only difference between an experiment and fooling around is you take notes from while doing an experiment. It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's the same really. Um, yeah, so it ferments for about, I don't know, eight, eight to 12 hours actually, because it's quite cold here in Norway. And, um, uh, yeah, and, and the colder retard after, after that in the fridge. So that, that's the process. And I mean, taking notes like that, you must have some sort of engineering backgrounds. Only engineers could be like this. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually a programmer, a software, uh, software guy. So, uh, <laughs> I knew it. Experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is so much in the engineering DNA, right? That you just change one parameter and have a look at the at the result. Is that what you're doing? You're just changing one parameter and then check what happens. That's what I I would like to do, but it's it's so hard to just. I, I mean, it's so complex, such a complex um, process to to bake bread. So it's really hard to just to isolate the variables. But that's what I what I'm trying. But sometimes I'm lazy and I, I change everything. Uh, 
I, I still I still um, I use the same recipe, but there are so many things you could change. Like how how are you bulking your uh, your dough? Is it in one container with two doughs and you split it after a bulk ferment and pre-shape and and shape it, or do you split it like uh, Kristen does? um where you put each dough in a separate pyrex glass dish which has the less friction is perfect for uh, handling the dough right it just uh, doesn't stick to anything um but then you have two separate doughs so you can't you can't uh, compare them uh, as good uh so yesterday i did an, a blister experiment where i tried to compare uh, this one here right yeah right um i tried to compare uh, if you how, how can you maximize the blisters? The blisters are uh, like you probably know what the blisters are. Those bubbles that form on the crust, they're super crackly and and make yeah, they introduce another uh, layer of texture to your bread. So I, I love them. Some people don't, but I love them. So I want to figure out how can I make them bigger and more of them because sometimes they just don't appear and it's not it's not uh, clear science uh, how that works. So, but someone had a theory. I it was one of your friends, I think, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. the moisture or humidity in the um, Marcel in the, Palm, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the theory was, if you cold retard your dough with just a cloth uh, on top, it will it will dry out in the fridge, and that will maximize the blisters. So mm -hmm. I did, did one of one of reds uh, the same way as I always do in, inside the plastic bag. Uh, and the other one just with the cloth uh, on top. And this experiment just turned out crazy. Um, I, I didn't include the better picture, but um, the right one has a huge air and great oven spring. And the left one has, it, it's horrible. Uh, it, it's not horrible. It had good oven spring, but it has no air and it looks just flat and, and, and lame. This this uh, picture does not do any good justice. Uh, but the, the whole point of this experiment was the blisters. And the blisters are so similar, I can't tell, tell any difference. But the breads turned out so differently, even though I, I did the exact, exact same thing and just split them just before shaping them. So I must have done something uh, wildly crazy and different uh, while I shaped them. So I had to uh, repeat this experiment. So which one had the bigger blisters, the one instead of a plastic bag or the one without? Both, yes. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I couldn't tell the difference, and I really studied them. Um, okay, definitely. Um, these are. Wait a second! Bad. I'm just removing the picture. There you go. So, oh, uh, you you are such a show off. This is amazing. Now I'm hungry. Right. So, the right side is maybe black tear. Nice in the background. Uh, this one right here is uh, the the cloth which had the best oven spring and the great air and the huge belly. Oh, that is... mm -hmm. But this one has a very small belly and uh, almost no air. But, so, but the blisters are almost the same, so I, I couldn't tell any difference. And the crumbs are super similar as well. But so the only different... Yeah, you don't have this ear, right? So you're missing a little bit of that crisp component that you get when, when you take a crack of that ear. Yes. But the thing is, my normal, it was the normal breads that didn't have any air. So the, okay. they usually have great air and great bellies. Uh, so, so if you don't know, the belly is, is the part from the air to where you've cut it. So mm -hmm. with uh, all the, the Instagram stars, they have these the huge bellies and they just open like crazy. Uh, so, so my normal breads didn't open at all in this experiment. Uh, that was the control. So that ruins the whole experiment and I have to do it again. I'm telling you, Matthias, this has happened so many times to me that I thought, okay, I got this experiment right, but then neither of them, the control group also worked, didn't work. And I had to repeat this experiment one more time. You're always living on the edge with Sardo, right? Just a few minutes longer of fermentation or something like that. And yeah, you cross that edge. Yeah. It's fun and horrible at the same time. Yeah. So you, you know it's horrible when, when all your friends get tired of getting bread because you just bake so much to repeat the experiments. <laughs> so you share the bread with your neighbors and friends, or what do you do? Neighbors? That was a good idea, actually. <laughs> so only, only friends and friends, no neighbors yet. 
Uh, there was a question from Frank Cresbo. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, Frank. How can I share my most recent bread? So there is a link in the description of the video, and there are also some dial-in credentials, so other people can actually join us and have a chat on sourdough. <clears throat> there is already one person who dialed in, and that's Thomas. Um, yeah, so the submissions right now are closed, Frank. So you would need to submit one for the next part because I'm really terrible at multitasking, so I'm not able to add any new submissions right now. We're going to be having a look at the top seven or eight submissions today. And if we don't talk about your bread, um, I'll try to do my best to drop a comment on all the submissions that have been there on the post. Um, Thomas, if you are still around, then I think uh, now would be a good time to activate your camera and microphone again, and then we can have a chat with you. Sure. There he is, Thomas. Hi, everyone. <laughs> You're live. Everybody from yes. around the world is able to see you. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Where, where are you from, Thomas? I'm from Denmark, so not that far away from you, just... Uh, south uh sorry north of the uh the border so a couple of hours from hamburg ah is that sonderborg is that yeah that's the nearest uh city yeah ah, i've been going on a fishing trip there for a few times i think yeah it's really nice um so thomas you submitted the bread as well i'm gonna be putting here so matthias is now a bread can you speak mr bread am i mr bread yes you're mr bread Matthias. It's a little small, I guess. <laughs> yeah, enlarge it. <laughs> oh, that looks great. That's it, it, it. So the bell is really nice and uh, great uh, caramelization. And I, I always know, uh, know how um, you get a little burning, a uh, little charring at the top, at the topmost part. I mean, every color is another taste, right? That's what they say. Uh, so in my opinion, that, that looks well fermented and great. Uh, I haven't seen the crumb yet, but uh, looking forward to it. Have you also submitted a picture of the crumb, uh, Thomas? So yeah, oh. that was the first picture actually. Okay. There you see the uh, crumb. Ah, right. My bad. Yes. I'm going to Actually, my it. bad, because I didn't have you guys in the full screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that looks like a uh, more than 20% whole wheat at least 30. Am I right? Uh, there is actually only whole wheat in the uh, in the sourdough. Uh, the the other flour I add is is not uh, whole wheat. Really? But it's uh, it's a stone um, milled uh, flour, so it's it's a little um, um, dark colorish uh, type of flour. I mean, this is a, this is a great bread. I think it it looks so even and and it looks well fermented from uh, from the crumb. So uh, the crumb one more time here. Mm -hmm. What? So yeah, Thomas, what do you what would you like to improve on this bread? So, so for me, and and you actually already uh, uh, addressed the topic. For me, it's really the blistering I'm working on now. I think I've got the process kind of um, nailed now. I, I get very similar breads uh, in almost every bake. So I think I've kind of have control of the process, but I'm really working on the blistering. And I've seen some pictures from other bakers where the um, uh, the, the crust is just covered in blisters and it looks, it looks amazing, shiny, bubbly, I mean, just crisp. Um, and I would like to get there, but I'm not really sure. I'm struggling with the same things that you're saying trying with 20 grams of ice cubes, spraying 40 grams, seven grams. I mean, doing a dance before putting the lid on the pan. I mean, whatever. And so far, it didn't work. When we talk about blisters, Henrik, you got a, do you have your blister like, monster uh, right there? Ah, uh, you mean a picture? Yeah. Okay, you, you guys continue chatting about the blisters. I'm going to get a blister monster here on the screen. Give me a second. All right. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> how, how to get blisters? Uh, it's not exact science, right? Uh, you try the dance, and you try the ice cubes, and everything. Uh, but did you try the humidity within your fridge to lower I, the I did not check humidity in the fridge. I did the plastic bag, and I did the, uh, the proofing uh, in a cloth, uh, and I tried lowering the temperatures in the fridge, but I haven't checked the, hu the humidity. 
So uh, what, what should I do there in order to, to test out uh, other? So just having a cloth covering it during the cold uh, proof in the bridge, yeah. that's what I did now. And that's yeah. the, the, la the latest theory I heard about. Uh, yeah. to get yeah. because I'm also doing that at the moment. <laughs> you, need, you need lots of water, right? Or a lot of steam to get the blisters, but sometimes you don't. So yeah. it's... What about, uh, I mean, proofing time in the fridge? Have you kind of experimented whether you would do it eight hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, and whether that makes a difference on the blistering? Well, on the 24 hours, I have some experience, and that, that's, that's the, 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 the pain tolerance for my breads. They tend to collapse after that. Mm. So sometimes I bake two breads, and I bake one of them after 16 hours. And I can also wait 24 hours and bake it like the next uh, evening. But mm -hmm. if I work overnight again, even though it's only four degrees in my fridge, I think it's it's your favorite favorite enzyme, Henrik, uh, the um, pro something. ODA, I always oh, yeah. use pronouncing. Yeah. Yet. Yes. The, the, the enzyme uh, guy that just eats all the gluten, he goes mm -hmm. crazy the last uh, all, all all the time actually. So yeah, they, they just tend to collapse. So I, I think that will destroy the rest of the business as, as well if you try to go even longer we have a few other people here joining the discussion saying i oh, love blistering and i, I yeah i think that. it's it's amazing to have those blisters yeah, just I think we have it's 60 percent loving uh, blisters right mm. yes <laughs> so true yeah so i've read so many things on blisters and to me it's still like black magic um i think i have a way to get blisters which is whenever i ferment my dough exactly on point but i wouldn't be able to say i can reproduce it every time um i'm still trying to understand what exactly is going on and finding a reproducible way to get there mm. It's a little bit like when you're an engineer and then you have a test suite running and there's always one random test that fails and you don't know why that is the case. So there's still a little bit of randomness to it, but I think for sure the most important factor is that you nail the fermentation as far as I can tell. Yeah, I heard that as well. But also, yeah, for me, there are things ahead. you can do to, 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 to destroy the blisters. If you bake too hot, way too hot, then, then there's no chance. So. Those are some variables you can take out of the equation, at least. And I agree. So too hot and also too much steam seems to have negative effects. Yeah, that's also what I noticed in my cool. experiment with too much of an ice cube. Didn't you measure the temperature within your Dutch oven and uh, discover that if you have too much steam, the temperature goes down? Um, so the temperature inside of the Dutch oven with a lot of steam is at around 100 degrees Celsius. So because there's no pressure, the temperature will not go higher than the 100 degrees Celsius. But still, you transfer um, you transfer the heat faster to the actual dough. And I think you don't want that. You don't want the heat to be transferred too fast, which is the same when you have more ice cubes or a higher temperature. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, we still, I think we need to do a few more videos on this topic. And I'm also so happy to have another chat with you uh, here on this topic, uh, Matthias. I think it's yeah interesting to make those blisters. And now, Thomas, we need to score your bread. So we first of all, oh, that was not your bread. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> so Thomas. Be kind to me. <laughs> <laughs> so which rating scale did we agree on, Matthias? I think we decided uh, one to three was uh, we didn't have enough uh, grades within that system, so we had to upgrade it a bit uh, to get more uh, fine grainness. So we went for a one to five rating, where three is in the middle and uh, medium. But also, every bread, or the, at least there are different uh, categories of uh, of breads. So if you're trying to go for an open crumb then the grade should be completely different if you're trying to make a sandwich spread. So I think we need to kind of set that uh, before our grading. That's true. Yeah, it's hard It's hard to rate, of course. And I always like to use annoying scales like, I don't know, one to seven or three to seven, something like this. But maybe we can do 
<laughs> a one to five today. What do you think? So let's ask the community as well. One more time, the bread from Thomas. And then afterwards, we give our verdicts. You first, so that I can cheat a little bit and listen to what you have to say. And then me afterwards. So here, one more time, the Quran from Thomas. Number one, the bread. And another picture here. So let's see what everybody's writing. Now time to give your points from one to five. Let's see what the others are writing. <laughs> so uh, first of all, Frank says, okay, one to five is a good scale. <laughs> Tiger, four. Mikael, five out of five. So Thomas, you know what? You need to You need to take over for a second because this is my Amazon package just arriving so <laughs> let me yeah. just let me just put on this picture here for you matthias and you have to take the show for one minute i'll be right back no problem <laughs> so guys i see i see four and i see 4.2 4.5 like uh, great idea so uh, of the um, of the of the rating i think i agree um but the bigger question is what's in uh, henrik's package so I think we should uh, take time to, to guess. I think it's probably a pH meter or something, because we already have two. <laughs> so can we have some uh, some proposals in the in the chat? What is what is coming from his Amazon delivery? But yeah, for me, I think Matthias tells. Tells the story behind baking in the hut in the middle of Norwegian mountains. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I've been traveling a lot lately, uh, going to huts in distant locations, um, not in, in, in very distant locations. But the thing, the, the place I posted on Instagram was actually uh, quite distant. Uh, so um, yeah, I like to. I, I, I need bread, right? So I, I wanted to bake um, when, when I when I went there, um, and it's. It's this super small oven. It's it's just it's so small. It, it's like a microwave, so it it can barely fit my bread. But it, it turned out it was actually great. Uh, it was actually a great oven for uh, for baking bread because it was so small. Because what's the problem? It's, it could be uneven baking bread, but we can get around that uh, by including some baking sheets uh, on the top. To, to block the heat and even it out, or using uh, steel. Um, ooh, Amazon delivery. <laughs> but um, I'm just tell, tell, tell someone asked me uh, the story about um, uh, baking in the huts uh, in the distant uh, in the mountains. So okay. yeah, and of course you need to bake wherever you go, right? So yeah. I, I find it very fun to to challenge myself and bake in a different environment and try to hack that environment. And I actually managed to bake just uh, as good of a bread there as uh, as in my home. So that was that was really nice. Uh, I think uh, it's really fun to, to try it. I also had to heat. I uh, picked up some rocks and I heated them in like in a wood oven just to get them flaming hot. And I just put them in uh, in a small tin can in the oven and poured some water on it to get more steam. But yeah, that was in the Norwegian back. mountains, or yeah, correct. So I think Matthias, you're doing so well. You're doing so much better as a host than I am. You see, I'm just running away, fetching some packages, and you're here running the show. When are you opening up your own YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, give a round of applause to Matthias, who definitely is a way better host uh, than I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I asked the chat what um, uh, I asked them to, to guess what what you're getting uh, from Amazon. Okay, and what were we the people good, saying? Uh, we had some good uh, <laughs> <laughs> nipple clamps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ian, I'm not able to show them here on the live stream, but I think it's very, very close. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, let's just go back to the rating one more time. Thomas, I already removed you from the stream, but you can still hear us, I assume. And I think the people were saying 4.3554. Five, Crumb is a five. Somebody here says, how do you actually say P in English? Is it P, pie. Pie? Pie? Yeah, pie? Is it like the pie that you can eat? 
Or is that a different pronunciation? No, that's Pai. Pai. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Thomas, thank you so much one more time for this amazing submission. Truly appreciate it. Also, thank you for joining <clears throat> the live stream. Um, awesome. Okay, let's have a look at the next submission here. So everybody who is not following uh, Matthias yet, here is his Instagram account one more time. I'm also going to be linking it in the description of the video later on for you to just click on and press that follow button. Matthias, Fool's Crump. Please tell me one more time, Matthias, the name Fool's Crump. Where does Fool's it come Crump. from? Fool's Crump. Um, where did I hear about that? Um, it was maybe Suna or uh, or maybe you or uh, yeah soon is um, food geek from from Denmark so uh, yeah talking about full scrum and it's it's something it's something bad you, you can have and I think most of us have experienced uh, experienced it at least once it's the feeling when you when you open if you if you're baking the Dutch oven if when you open the lid and you just that's and by the way that's the best moment right oh yes you open the lid and you see that the bread is Looking good. Yeah, it, you have you have this huge belly, great on spring, and you're like, oh my god, the crumb is going to be so nice. And you take it out and you wait for two hours, right? Because you have to wait because the camera eats first. So yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Christian says let it let it um, cool down uh, inside the oven actually uh, to make it really dry out, not not to make it uh, dry, but uh, to make it easier to cut and better for the pictures. <laughs> That's not a topic for another time. Uh, <laughs> I lost my track here. Yeah, full scrum. <laughs> so we kept yeah. it, and it's just super dense scrum, and you have a huge hole inside. That's that's the worst thing, right? Would you say this is a full scrum? Not exactly. Um, so you have big holes, uh, which I definitely. This is my uh, this is my bread. Um, it, it it it's it's not uh, my best bread uh, to say the least. And uh, the problem is the, the big holes. Um, it's not when you have if you're trying to go for an open crumb bread. Uh, in my opinion, it should be even uh, sized holes. So the more even it is, the better it is. So if you have a lot of large holes, evenly sized, then it's then it's good. Um, so there are some big holes here, and the, those are either um, introduced during bulk, bulk fermentation uh, we, um, when you handle it. You get some bubbles and you you don't pop them, so then then they just stay inside the crumb. Uh, and when you bake it, they take up space from the rest of the crumb, so that will actually make it more compact, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, but but it could also have been uh, introduced uh, during shaping, of course. Um, so this is also a picture of mine. I think <clears throat> also from the fermentation aspect, some people have been saying it's a fool's crumb, but I totally agree with you. So there are two large pockets there, but I think they've also been introduced during shaping. Because if you look at the rest of the crumb, I mean, yours is looking even way better than mine, <clears throat> but um, it looks properly fermented. It's just that there is too much of a large pocket of air, right? Mm -hmm. But I think I, I would call it fool's crumb if you just if you just whip the dough around in the room while shaping it and uh, while during the bulk ferment, just to introduce just a lot of air, and it would just, just be full of. Uh, fake holes, if you could say that, <laughs> and then yeah. it would, would also be a, a full scrum, in my opinion. Um, one more note on that topic. I don't know if you guys know, I think it's from Greece, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the pita bread, which is just a flat bread which pops in the oven. And <clears throat> I think it's a similar process because if it's not properly fermented, but you have a some sort of a gluten network that holds together the dough, um, then it's going to pop in the oven. It's going to pop nice and open, but still it's not fermented. It's just coming from the heat and I think from the water that's evaporating inside and that just gases up the whole dough. So it's not induced by fermentation, but it's just induced by high heat. Mm -hmm. And some people just mistake that for proper fermentation. There are some nice airs inside, but actually it's just the high heat that caused this. Mm. That's, so, that's one of the key... Uh... Uh, things to look for uh, with an uh, under fermented bread, right? Those huge uh, ca uh, cavities uh, along uh, near the top of the bread, the top of the crust. 
And now why we are already on it. I mean, we could probably go on talking about this for hours, Matthias, I feel. We still want to have a look at the other submissions. Really? But you, you also sent me a few other pictures. I just want to talk about this. Um, you sent this to me and said, Hendrik, this is an over-fermented bread. Could you elaborate a little bit what you mean by over-fermented? Over-fermented means when you have gone past that time uh, during the fermentation process, um, the, over the perfect spot and way over probably, so that the <laughs> the enzyme, <laughs> your favorite enzyme, <laughs> protease, <laughs> Pro, protease, yeah, uh, protease, too much movement, and uh, you have a collapse uh, uh, in the internal uh, structure. So it's very hard to explain for me, but this is this is a crumb style I have seen in my breads way too many times and that's because i tried to push the bulk so long i pushed it so far i live on the fermentation edge and what's special about this crumb is you can see that they're kind of elongated holes very even um so I, it, for me it's quite easy to 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 see to see over fermentation um at least for this type of bread uh, i'm sure some of you have seen it as well Ian is asking, uh, by the way, we are reading the chat. Whenever possible, I'm putting in the question when it's relevant to the discussion. Um, I also appreciate you guys uh, answering to the other people in the chat. So that's super helpful. So for instance, thank you so much, Angelica, for being there. Um, Ian had a great question related to this. How much expansion percent is over fermentation? Is there a value that you could say X percent percent uh, expansion is over fermentation? Is that even possible? Yes, of course. It's 97. That's That's been uh, proved a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> 97? <laughs> no, absolutely not. It, it totally depends on... on uh, and that's that's another interesting subject, because expansion does is not the same as fermentation. Because if you hand the dough throughout the bulk, it will degas and you will lose expansion. And that's, that's something you can uh, see uh, with your uh, alicot um, uh, jars. If you take a small sample from your, uh, from your dough and put it into a small cylindrical um, uh, container to measure uh, the, the volume uh, precisely, because this sample is not handled uh, through um, uh, bulk fermentation, but your main dough is. So every time you handle it, it you degas it. So if you see 200% rise in your alligate, that that's not the same. You will not see 200% increase in your main dough. Uh, and generally, you can ferment higher uh, gluten content breads longer, For right? Longer period of time. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add one more point because I think this is also underrated. So this is over fermented. So it doesn't have such a nice, uh, beautiful crumb like those two. But still, I mean, for people who have, for instance, celiac disease, uh, disease or something like that, the gluten is broken down over time, which means it might I don't want to talk about the health topic, but from a fermentation perspective, it's more fermented. So mm -hmm. more of the raw material has broken down. So if you're the kind of person who sometimes has a little bit of an issue um, eating a bread like this, then probably what you want to do is instead of even just using a banneton, just let your bread ferment for a very, very, very long time and use a loaf pan. I still think you may have amazing bread and the taste is also nice, but you just won't have, of course, that nice, um, super fluffy bread with beautiful mm -hmm. open spring. And also tastes. I mean, those breads that are over fermented, they taste more. They taste more tangy and more sour. So that that's a great. I mean, they're delicious, but they're just not exactly that crumb I'm going for when I'm trying yeah. to perfect it. Yeah. Hold on one second because I just want to fetch my sourdough from the kitchen. I'm just going to be putting you here on the spot one more time. So now is your question to ask Matthias a few more questions for thirty seconds. <laughs> All right. Bring it on. How do I probably pre-shape without degassing? I always struggle with uh, struggle after bulk. Time to pre-shape, and I feel like I have to stretch the dough and lose a lot of weight. Yeah, I feel I feel that way. Uh, I feel the same way, uh, and th that's why I don't pre-shape. <laughs> Simple as that. I bake one bread, or if I bake two breads, I have two separate containers, so I don't pre-shape it. I'm just like pouring it super carefully out of the bulking dish uh, onto a flour surface and just fold it carefully on top of its uh, on top of itself. Who could put that on the stream? 
Does Heather have control? <laughs> I was here all the time. I was just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> get, get out and say something behind your back. <laughs> no, I actually wanted to fetch my uh, small sample jar and show everybody. So this is for my upcoming overnight sourdough bread. And so I actually uh, added my sourdough starter at 10 p.m. yesterday evening, and it's almost now 24 hours later. And what you can now see here is um, the, the dough is nicely gassed up, but when I'm gonna put this in here, the dough is just going to start to collapse. That's because the gluten inside, which holds all the gas, no longer holds together. So let's give this a shot. And I hope that this is actually going to collapse. And in software engineering, we call this the demo ghost. So when you try to demo it to and show it to your peers, uh, it just <laughs> doesn't work. So you can now see it from the inside that this now really starts to collapse. And this is what happens when you have this sort of over fermentation. The gas can no longer be stored inside of the gluten network, and then your dough collapses which is not necessarily a bad thing, but if you want to have oven spring, then you really need to find that sweet spot between uh, fermenting long enough, but also not too much. And I think if you're struggling, one thing that I personally feel is really underrated is to use a loaf pan. Um, you have those two cuts, right? Can you just show the slices one more time, Matthias, that you took before? And what I like to call those is, I like to call those the filet slices when you make a batard. Uh, so the, the batard is the shape that Matthias made and it's also the one visible here on my t-shirt. That's a batard uh, shape. And all the other slices you take afterwards are just gonna get smaller, smaller and smaller, right? <laughs> so that's what I personally don't like too much. You have those, I don't know, four filet sirloin slices from the yep. batard. And then afterwards, it's like, oh, it's getting smaller. It's not so nice anymore. Wait, so I think, wait, the... sorry? Wait a minute. Did you say not okay. so nice anymore? It's the best part. It's all okay. crust. Okay, true. Okay, so <laughs> the last slice, yes. But the ones in between, they don't have such a nice shape anymore. Uh, so you really have those two perfect slices in the middle and then not so nice. But with a loaf pan, you have equally good slices all the time. Yeah. Uh, there's actually one guy I want to shout out, a bread baking orth orthopod. He's a surgeon. He bakes these perfect uh, cubes, cubic breads. Uh, in the How does it work? This is magic. I yeah, I know. Try. Have you seen them? No, I have not seen I, Well, I know them from the supermarket, but how do you make a nice cubic bread? He's, he told me that it's because in, in the norf normal uh, loaf pan, you you have some some level and you don't usually have the dough up to, uh, up to, uh, to, to the top, right? And it rises and it becomes uh, like a dome on the top. But inside, the it's it's sealed. So you, he, he bakes in a, in a humid environment and it just completes the, the, the cube and becomes cubic. And he says he had to fiddle a lot with, uh, with the volume to make it right. Because if you had uh, too little, then it just kind of uh, went hanging from the top. And too much, it's, I don't think that was a good idea. <laughs> <because it's, laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not that easy, actually. But it looks great. And it's great for a sandwich loaf. OK. Oh, that's super, super interesting. Um, by the way, so I've recently switched a little bit to making a more liquid sourdough starter. and. Uh, one thing that I observed from this liquid sourdough starter, and there's going to be a video on this topic soon, is that you can change the, same, the, the taste of your sourdough starter and the taste of your bread. Just by making it more liquid, the taste of your sourdough starter changes. It's super fascinating to me. As far as I understand, I mean, I understand nothing. I feel this is always the way how it is about sourdough. The more you understand, the less you actually understand, right? Absolutely. And, it's, <laughs> and it seems to be that this layer here of water on top of the flour is actually blocking some oxygen, which gets into contact with the lactic acid bacteria. And so the lactic acid bacteria are either homofermentative, so that they just create lactic acid, but there are also some which are heterofermentative, and that means they create lactic acid, ethanol, which is beer, and mm -hmm. the third one, acetic acid. And by removing the oxygen, they no longer produce any acetic acid. So what happens is lactic acid, if you eat yogurt, that's what you're eating, lactic acid. So the sourdough itself tastes very yogurty. 
that's so interesting. Uh, I interesting. remember this, this balance between Tang and sourness. I think I learned that from uh, from Sunna Food Geek. Uh, you can ferment on a lower temperature. That would and that's I think the the um, that would uh, give you more lactic acid. Uh, and if you go for a, a higher temperature, it will give you more uh, acidic acid. Yeah, give you a more sour notes, less Tang. S -s definitely and i think we still need to also get another microbiologist here on the show so that we can ask her or him all the questions to really geek out on sorry i'm working i'm working on that but yeah give this a shot everybody there's going to be a video on this it really changes the flavor and in fact uh to everybody who follows me on instagram i've been working on a drink which is called a sour boucher um, which is a very hipster drink, I think. So hipsters are going to love this drink. And I might just, I should open up a shop just for hipsters to buy this particular drink. Because yeah, it's a sourdough drink. It's like mind blowing. And it tastes like yogurt. <laughs> so there's also going to be a video on that topic. I just find it super interesting how just a few changes uh, have such a dramatic impact. And there was a great comment here from Nancy. The more I know, the more I know, I don't know. And I think that's just so wise <laughs> and so true. <laughs> OK, just looking at the time frame. I'm sorry for getting lost in details. Let's have at another submission. Have a look at another submission from Las Spy. So this was the, the top vault of the red, wasn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to be including the recipe here one more time. <clears throat> From La Spy. La Spy. Did we pronounce the name correctly? I, I hope we did. So 90% bread flour, I think that's interesting. 10% whole wheat, lemon zest, oregano, kalamata olives, 20% levain, 80% um, hydration, 2.3% salt. Wow. What do you think, Matthias? When I when I see the, uh, this picture, it's just crazy. It looks like uh, a little bread monster in a good way because it's <laughs> it, it's going crazy, right? It it has like <laughs> oozing uh, kalamata olives uh, coming out, and yeah, it it looks it looks alive, and I, I really like that. It looks it looks uh, so cool. It looks crazy, right? I'm wondering though, because it seems here that some of the olives are more on the outside. How do you get them more on the inside? Because on the bottom right picture, it doesn't seem like there are any olives, right? So what I thought is these are actually two breads, one plain and one uh, with olives. That's my okay. analysis. I'm not sure no. because you can see the olives are leaking uh, in the left uh, picture. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, and it doesn't make sense to me that there's no leakage at all in the right one. And here, Vegan Demig is saying this bread with beer seems perfect because the olives, OK, with beer. Olives, olives and beer are good to combination? I didn't know. <laughs> but I mean, what's, what's not good with olives? <laughs> <laughs> what's not good with beer? I think that would be it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so what do you think uh, about the fermentation? of this bread, Matthias. What's your opinion on the fermentation? Has the fermentation been done properly? I know it's a little bit hard to see, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I think it looks great. Uh, I think it looks pro properly from, uh, fermented. Uh, shame on me if it's, if it's actually the same bread. <laughs> but uh, I think I think uh, there are some holes uh, that were probably introduced uh, with shaping, uh, especially when you have those long elongated uh, holes uh, near the surface. Um, also, have you noticed there are often more openness towards one of the sides than the other? Mm -hmm. You can see that here. It's, it looks almost a little, little bit uh, tighter uh, on the left, uh, on the right picture, on the left hand side of the right picture. Uh, you can mm -hmm. see a tighter crust, a uh, tighter crumb. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, and, and a lot more open on, on the right side. So I think it's properly fermented. At, le at, at least uh, the, the left picture looks uh, very uh, correct uh, fermented, in my opinion. And so why, why, how could you explain that on the on the bottom right right picture, that the right hand side is not fermented as much as the left hand side? Because I agree. I is there a logical explanation for it? I wouldn't know how to explain it. 
if it's if it's two breads, then it makes sense. <laughs> then the the one can be more fermented than the other, right? Blue Roots here saying uh, pre-shape and Atzavara. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Atzavara in the German. Also saying pre-shape. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, of course, with pre-shaping, you're evening out the chrome, but then I would say it would, should have evened out everywhere and not just in one side or so. Maybe it was when shaping to that uh, you tuck down the dough a little bit on just one side. That could be a logical explanation, maybe. Yeah. Okay, voting time. Let's ask everybody to vote. And then, Matthias, it's your uh, turn first, and then I can just cheat and copy what you're saying. So voting. One more time. The last time as well. <laughs> 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 the benefits right. of being the host. <laughs> Last by. Uh, one more time. Beautiful pictures from Last by. Thank you so much. Absolutely. What are your thoughts? One, two, five. Now is voting time. Danville is saying, by the way, Danville, your picture, I've seen it so many times. It's amazing. I don't know what's actually going on there. Maybe you can enlighten us here in the chat what's happening there. <laughs> Rose Gold Star saying 4.76. Mikael, four out of five. Uh, Malini. Okay, please, Matthias. Try to pronounce Malini's last name. Uh, oh. <laughs> I think it's, you can say Suryana, maybe first. Suryana, Suryana Rayana. Suryana Rayana. Nice. And now the German uh, attempt, Suriyana Rayanan. Sorry, Malini. So sorry for screwing up your pronunciation. This is awesome. <laughs> Ian saying 4.1. <laughs> sorry? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Kill the method 3.8, 4.2. Zoha saying 4.7, 5, 5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, Malini is saying again, you can't pronounce my surname. I'm glad you had fun. My surname is even more difficult, probably. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, Matthias, what do you think? What's your take? What would you give this bread? I would, I would give the, the outside uh, uh, a five, a solid five, absolutely, because it looks amazing. It's, uh, it's, it's not, like, super symmetrical or... Uh, clean uh, clean uh, cats or, or anything but it, it just looks it has its own per personality and I love it uh, it looks super delicious and uh, for the insides uh, I think left I, I would say for for uh, 4.5 for the left picture and so maybe 3.75 on the right one or yeah something like that okay so overall vote. Uh, that would be a four. Four points. Twenty-five. <laughs> so I would agree. <laughs> I would agree with you. So what I don't like so much is that the olives are just leaking out like this. And I can assume that if you bake them too long, that they might taste a little bit weird if they have just been at the surface of the bread. Ooh, that's a good point. Uh, so that's what I don't like too much. I would like the olives to be a little bit more in the center. Um, the ear didn't open up as much as it could. So I'm giving the outside a three out of five. But crumb wise, I'm giving you a five out of five because it's really nicely fermented. And um, yeah, so overall, also a four out of five. Good job. I wish I could bake a bread like that every time. <laughs> I like how we disagreed so hard on the, on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's why I was I wanted to ha have you on the show because I think it's so much better to just have two different opinions on something than just my uh, annoying opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and Danville also just shed some light on the pictures from an old TV show it was supposed to be a very clownish CIA spy. Get Smart is the name of the old show. <laughs> okay. Learned something new here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, we everybody. Got to up, <laughs> All right. We got to speed up if we're we gotta, uh, gonna have We got to speed up. Yeah. Okay. So we have a few more breaths to go. Let's go. Next one is coming from Matteo. Um, Italian shout out. A quarter of me is Italian. Nice. Do you all speak Italian? Un po'. <laughs> oh, uh, 
So 400 grams of water, 600 grams of flour, 67% hydration, 20% starter, 2% salt. Matteo provided some nice pictures here, scoring on parchment paper, steaming with rocks, it seems. I like the rocks. Yeah, they look really nice, the rocks here. Okay. At the outside. That looks and... like it's been left in the fridge for too long, in, in my opinion, or that's the first thought I had. Mm -hmm. or, or just over fermented, I don't know. But the crumb? Mm -hmm. <sighs> What's your first thought, Nick? My first thought is, why is there so much flour sticking to the surface of this bread? <laughs> so Hen Henrik has this, uh, this uh, disease, uh, it's called flour panic. <laughs> <laughs> flour panic, that's a good one, yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I think a little bit too much flour here. That's looking a little bit strange to me because burnt flour doesn't taste so nice, in my opinion. I've also not been using rice flour a lot. Uh, we had a discussion on this before, uh, me and Matthias. I just like to wrap my dough with a little bit of flour these days. I feel it just integrates nicely with the surface. So that's what I don't like too much about it. There seems to be a little bit of a nice pattern here on the right-hand side but it didn't really come out. The ear didn't open up so nicely. Looking at the crumb, um, it looks like to me um, like a combination of over-fermented and maybe a little bit too much uh, water for the flour. That's what I would guess. Totally what agree. And it's, uh, that, that's the thing, um, when, when trying, to, when submitting your photos uh, for people to uh, debug your bread, it's really important to, to get a, uh, a close, a really close up, and try to get a clean cut because uh, it looks like the, the knife had um, damaged uh, the surface a little bit, and then it's very hard to see to see the crumb. Uh, the microstructures uh, in the pores are what really tells the the story of what happened. Mm -hmm. with hair. But you can see those elongated uh, patterns, or uh, from from bottom to top, uh, along cavities. And I have had that, those uh, in my over fermented uh, reds. Uh, time here, do it. Not here, but uh, yeah, but that, that's the over fermented crumb I was talking about. But mm -hmm. uh, I've definitely baked um, this other uh, this submission before. Uh, and I think that was mainly because I had too much water. And when you have too much water, just, there's no chance in, in making it stand tall uh, and get good over spring. It will just float out. What, what I noticed though in terms of water is that sometimes if you just need for longer, then you can compensate for having uh, too much water. So even if the flour doesn't have so much gluten and you use a stand mixer and really need for a long period of time, then at some point still you get a nice tight gluten network. Um, so that if you feel that your dough is a little bit too liquidy, you might you either add more flour or you just um, need for a longer period of time. But I think it's in many cases a lost cause. You should know what you're doing when you deal with water. And if you have too much, probably not so good. Okay, voting time, everybody. One more time, the breads from Matteo. From one to five, what do you think? Uh, Matteo, and here the crumb from Matteo. Let's check the chat. <laughs> Frank here is giving a two. Zoha giving a three. Mansoor Estes giving a three. Sean is giving a one. Oh, Sean, that's a that's a hard vote here, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Ross a three. Atzabar two point five. <laughs> Blue three. Sagar three. Danville two. Three. One, three, two point eight. I love that one. Good one. Diane, three, just three. Three because of the color. <laughs> uh, have got turkey. By the way, I love the usernames here on YouTube. Like always looking at cell, for instance. <laughs> Nuc nuclear meltdown. <laughs> Brad uh, Coat doesn't want to be the bad guy, so he sends Matteo first. <laughs> Uh, so if it was first bread greater than five, 
Okay, so this time I think it's only fair, Matthias, if I go first. Go it's okay. Ahead. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, Matteo, um, I'm giving you a two out of five. Reason being, flower panic, like Matthias said, flower panic, too much flour for me on the crust. Um, I think it's a little bit over fermented. Um, and yeah, so if you had that ear, then you get would get a little bit of extra crispness, but I think the crispness, which is very important, is ruined by the too much flour. And I think it's a two out of five, which I'm sorry for giving you a two out of five. I still think it's gonna be an amazing and delicious bread. But I think if you focus a little bit more on the fermentation aspect, then you can easily elevate that to a four out of five or a five out of five. Hmm. I think. I bet, yeah, I totally agree. I would say two as well. Um, reason being, um, I think the aesthetics means a lot to me, and the flower is not is not pleasant for me either. Uh, but I, I remember starting out, I had I didn't have a banneton, and I didn't have uh, either, uh, and not a round one either. So I just used like a baking uh, like a bowl and with, with some uh, cloth and some flour. And when you do that, then it will be uh, you will have way too much flour to make it not stick, and it will fall to the bottom of the um, of the bowl. So okay. yeah, and I used way too much water as well starting out because I was just <laughs> looking at the the, the pros the recipes and using all-purpose flours, and uh, yeah, I had a bad time. I had to scoop the whole thing uh, off the the bench and into a, um, a pan. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all been there. Yeah, Malini saying one more time. Come on, that looks delicious. You guys are cruel. I'm I'm so sorry. So we don't mean in any ways to disencourage you. Um, I think that bread was still super delicious, but of course we always want to focus on what to improve and how to become better at baking. So please don't see our vote as a disencouragement. It's just a way for you to become better and master this. Did I say that nicely? I think it was textbook uh, example. Oh, thank you. I should become a motivational coach. First <laughs> <need> five. <laughs> <laughs> motivational coach, one out of five. <laughs> okay, next one, we got a delicious bread from Pow Pow. Mm. I'm getting the, the olive uh, bread uh, feeling right now from the, the crude shape. Interesting, oh. right? Oh, what do you think of the crumb, Henrik? And recipe. So something, something is, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. No, I mean not, not in a bad way. Something is strange about the spread. What's in there? So, bread flour, rye. Ah, jalapenos are in there, and some clo uh, one clove of chopped garlic. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Yes, you see that now. What's your tip, Matthias? Because here on the on the on the ear, it's not sometimes it's it's not full ear. You can see it's a little bit rigid in the center. When you're scoring a bread, how do you score a bread? What would be your tip for everybody who tries to master scoring? Use a really sharp blade. Uh, that was my first challenge. I tried to use scissors. You can use scissors if you're uh, having an emergency. <laughs> Um, but yeah, just it makes it so more easy uh, to, to use a sharp knife and also cooling the dough. So if, you, if you're not cold, uh, cold proofing it uh, in the fridge, then you can just throw it in the freezer for 20 minutes or something. And that will make it so much easier when you have this firm outer layer to get through. It, it will make uh, the, the dough not uh, stick to the knife. And also use a razor blade because I, I went to the, um, to the drugstore and got like a uh, uh, surgeon's blades, because I thought that was yeah that would that, that would probably be really nice, but they're not sharp at all if you compare them to a razor blade. I thought they were really sharp. They're they're rigid. They're made to cut through like fl flesh, right? So they have to 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 be rigid, but they're not as sharp as a razor blade. So get your razor blades, guys. It's it's the it's the it's the shit. It's gonna be a big difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that was just mind blowing. Seriously. I expected a surgeon's knife to be sharper. So you definitely want to get that painkiller before going into surgery. Okay. 
<laughs> so one more time, everybody, the bread from Pow Pow. What do you think about the bread from Pow Pow? From one to five. Um, well, people are, are voting. I want to ask you, Henrik, what do you think? What do you see when? Uh, yeah, it sounds. Yeah, it sounds delicious with the onions and uh, jalapenos. Absolutely, totally agree. But uh, Henrik, what do you think about the about the, uh, about the crumb, uh, about the fermentation? About, on this bread? Yeah. I think the fermentation is exactly on point. <clears throat> if you see all those tiny pockets here of air, mm -hmm. then they have been nicely they have been nicely inflated. So you don't have that full scrum, but it, to me it looks like a bread that has been tightly pre-shaped. I would say so that you really condensed everything, and then afterwards it has been nicely proofed again. So to me, I would be very happy to achieve a crumb like that every time. I mean, it's not open. In a way, but still, I think it's very, very fluffy. I agree, but uh, if you looked at my camera while I was asking you, you would see my uh, I have this uh, very uh, special look, and that's because my my machine learning network uh, just detected overproofed uh, because I, I see I see the crumb style that I've seen so many times. It's it's not very overproofed, but I think it's a little bit. If you take up the picture uh, we looked at uh, earlier, it's... Oh, oh, hold on a second, Matthias. What did you just say? You said you have a machine learning network to detect. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's, yeah, that's very ge geeky. Uh, but um, machine learning, it's you, you, you almost make... You, you, you program a computer just like a human brain, basically. You try to, to, to replicate the human brain. So you can make a machine learning uh, program to detect open crumb or uh, overproofed. And so that's why I say my, my machine learning just detected it. Because when you've seen it a lot of times, uh, uh, that type of crumb, you will detect it easier, more easily. So this is the, the overproofed uh, crumb um, from one of my breads. And actually, the shape is also a little bit similar because it starts to, to deflate a little bit the whole bread. Uh, and it will become more and more pancakey, and I think that's actually started to happen here a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, if we kept going with the fermentation, it would just become more and more flat. And you can also see it along the edge, uh, the very edge, uh, so the top part of the picture where the the bottom crust goes over to the side of the bread. Um, if that is very, if that's a right right angle like this, um, I feel I feel that. When it's proper fermented and you have super much oven spring, the the edge will be like this. It will be round from the bottom mm -hmm. to the outer um, uh, to the outer crust. Uh, but okay. when it's when it's all fermented, it will start to deflate and fall upwards, and you will get more of a right angle. Okay. That's what do we say? Analysis. What do we say? Yeah, makes sense. What do we say about the um, the the scoring? I think. Yes, right. The scoring needs work. I also agree. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I hope you meant uh, grading. We need to grade faster. But yes, yeah, scoring. True. That's scoring. <laughs> okay. okay. But, I'm but, a, I think another Norwegian. Um, yeah. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi, Andrea. Hi, hi. Uh, but one question which I wanted to pull out, put on here real quick from Ian Skinner. Please talk about pH. Is it important? So. If we now start to talk about the pH topic, Ian, we would never be done. We could be talking probably until tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. So I'm not going to answer this. Yes, it's important, uh, but there is going to be a video at some point just focusing on this topic from my perspective. <laughs> OK, that, your vote, Matthias. Yes. Last thing about pH, if you baked 100 breads or 200 breads, you don't need pH because you, you have it, you, you can feel it, you have it by feel. The pH is a shortcut. It can be a shortcut to measure for fermentation. So yeah, let's get back to that later. Um, my vote is uh, 3 or 3.5. 3.5, yeah, 3.5. That's my final uh, vote. I think that the crumb is great, uh, but I, I get I get the feeling that it went too far and I lost the open openness I, I went for. And it kind of has, it's not tight on the outside. It's not like it's, it's not stretched very good because it started to deflate and lost lost its um, its uh, its uh, its springness, if you could say that. 
So for me, this is a uh, it, it's a very good bread, uh, 3.5. Okay. I would give it a four uh, just because I think it's creative to have the um, the garlic inside. And that was also the the uh, caramelized onion and jalapeno. So good I fun. think from a taste, it's probably very good. But I also agree with you on the defects that you just mentioned. So yeah, thank you so much, Pao Pao, for your submission. Next one from Zoha. Zoha, I think we're looking at a whole wheat bread, aren't we? Recipe here, 20% rice starter, whole wheat flour, 14% protein. So a whole wheat bread from Zoha. Thoughts, so this is simply a five, uh, the grade five, because uh, you included the pH. <laughs> that's, that's a bonus point, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, good one, Zoha. Yes, I just saw it. Right, you included the pH. <laughs> uh, next time, you should also join here, uh, Zoha, and also become an interviewer, a reviewer here. Your thoughts, Matthias? Uh, was it only bread flour or was it uh, some whole wheat? On, only whole wheat. Yeah, right, because it looks it looks really dark. And this is this is great. Uh, I, if you want to go for a more open crumb, then you should probably just give up because you have to go in great uh, lengths uh, to to achieve that. You have, you have to kind of uh, to like sift out the uh, the bran and go just on a crazy rampage to to achieve like really open bread, open crumb. So I, I think this looks like a, a great uh, a great crumb for um, for uh, whole wheat. And also, I think it's hard to to see. Um, I think it actually looks a little more fermented this this one as well. Uh, I, I can kind of um, recognize the the, 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 um, the crumb, um, and also with whole wheat it ferments faster, so it's easier to to over ferment it if you if you usually bake with uh, with white flour. I agree with everything you said. I think from a whole wheat perspective, you could probably get just a little bit more of an open crumb, but it's very hard with with whole wheat. Yes. But looking at the pH, that you had a pH of 4.1 already on the starter also leads me towards the direction that maybe it has been over fermented just a, a little bit. But still, I think you even managed to get an ear on the whole wheat bread, which is not so not so easy. To me, it's at the wrong position of the bread. Um, I would have loved it to be a little bit more in the center, not too much on the edge, but that's just my preference, of course. But overall, good job, Zoha. Aside from that, I just recently started to move my uh, my ears. It's super easy. You just move the score. Uh, I, I mean, it's it's not that hard <laughs> to understand, but I, I just realized that uh, recently. So I have to move my Do ears. you score in the center or more a little bit to the edge, Matthias? It's a C section. <laughs> it's a C section. <laughs> That's how you get, out the baby, get the baby out. Uh, so <laughs> C, uh, it's score from, from uh, yeah, it's just like a C. That's the best okay. way to explain it. Mm -hmm. Just like the yeah, foolproof baking does it. Uh, so everybody, please place your votes for Zoha. Zoha has um, a question, which pH should I aim for then? I, I'm going to answer that. It depends on your flower. So every flower is unfortunately unique, and the pH depends on the flower that you are using. What I like to do is I like to bake my breads at around a pH of uh, something between 3.9 and 4.2, which is a big difference, but it depends on the flour. So pH of 3.9 is, is so much more sour than pH of 4.2. <laughs> so that didn't answer your question, but didn't answer your question. I'm sorry. So it's something that you have to experiment on with your own flour. Um, okay, so what are the people saying here? Uh, 4.4, 5, 4.8, Crystal, a 4, Peter is giving a 4.4, Sean, Sean is always on the lower rating scale, it seems, a 2. <laughs> just just a crazy five. fitness picture here, 5, 4.8. From, from Danville, uh, 4.5, super open, Lazy Crumb is an IG fad, in my opinion. Totally agree. It's it's uh, absolute in the uh, Instagram fab. Uh, some people love it, and but I mean you can make make amazing bread, uh, perfect for uh, sandwich loaves. You you can't use uh, open crumb for uh, for jam. Right? 
programming you can, but I always have to clean up after. And so, I don't know, Weijin here, Amund, four point six seven. What's your what's your what's your rating, Matthias? I would say a four. Uh, I would also give you a four because I think probably slightly over fermented, but probably also super 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 delicious with that whole wheat. It's not so easy to get an ear on whole wheat, so I think um, Zoha, you did a really great job. Thank you so much for the submission. Also great to see a whole wheat bread coming in here. Okay, so we have, let me just check. We have three more submissions, okay? So we can't go through all of them because then we would spend the whole night. Um, I'm going to give you the names. So the next one is going to be Code Nasha, which is a funny German uh, word. Um, then we have Shane and we have Terim uh, for this. I'm going to be having a look at the other submissions after the stream or tomorrow, and I'll try to give you some feedback if possible. Uh, but please, if your bread has not been here on the show today, we're going to do another show, and then you can submit your bread uh, one more time. And we have only been using the top submissions because it's hard to yeah just to, to go through everything, and we need to have some sort of voting. I would be happy if you had some feedback at some point how to make maybe make qualifiers or something like that to make that a little bit more transparent. Um, yeah, but so far, thank you also, Matthias. It has been amazing to chat with you about the breads. Coat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nasha. Ooh, that looks like the oven I baked uh, with uh, uh, in the mountains, actually. That looks great, doesn't it? Absolutely. And now, now comes something amazing by Code Nasha, who also designed the thumbnail of this um, show, by the way. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just wow. <laughs> Just wow, everybody. Please give a, a virtual round of applause to Code Nasha for being so creative and uh, be adding some CSS here. And I think that's a block element modifier syntax if my front end skills aren't too rusty here. <laughs> so 75% hydration, 20% starter, 2.5% salt, 10% seeds. Good job, Code Nasha. I don't know if the, the grams is an actual unit though. <laughs> I gotta try that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think it's gonna give you invalid CSS code, uh, this one, but still oh. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> Also interesting editor font he's using. I don't know which font that is. So one more time, Code Nasha. What are your thoughts, Matthias? The first thing I notice is the um, how shiny the crust, how shiny the crust is, and to get real good shine on the crust, I think it's I think it's hard. Um, it's something I strive for. I don't always get it, and I'm not entirely sure how to get it either. I think it's steam. You you need a very steam environment to get. Uh, very shiny bread, and you should uh, probably not have too much flour on it. Uh, the bottom part we can see uh, on the side there, it's that was quite um, uh, the opposite of shiny. <laughs> Matt, but yeah. It's, I mean, baking in an oven like this alone is a challenge, isn't it? It seems you don't even use a Dutch oven code, Nasha, as far as I can see. Doesn't look like it. So, Did it say what do you want to do? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Did it say anything about steam in the recipe? <clears throat> so, 25 minutes with steam and 30 minutes without steam. How is that steam introduced, though? <laughs> I think the only, because I had a similar oven like this, and the way how I would bake in an oven like this is I would just use the bottom heat for mm. the start. So, because you have those heating racks right on top, and they're going to heat up the top part of your dough too much, and then you can no longer have oven spring. Um, I'm I'm amazed seeing this bread, seriously. With this setup, not so many tools. This is, this is great. Let's ask the others your thoughts. So from Code Nasha, one more time. Uh, Code Nasha, the bread wizard. And also the CSS magician using the block element modifier, which was first introduced by, I think, Yandex in Russia. 
Code Nasha. So what are the people saying? <laughs> oh, by the way, here he is, Code Nasha. Hi, nice to have you on the show. Some spritzes during the bake, and yes, only bottom heat at the beginning. <laughs> also funny picture. <laughs> uh, 3.5, Frank gives it a five. Blue Boots, five. Five here, Danville, 4.7, lovely loaf. Sean, a three. Peter, a 4.7. Um, greetings back to Iran. <laughs> Aditya gives it a five. And uh, Vegan gives it a five. What would you say, Matthias? I think it's your turn. Ah, damn. <laughs> so to me, personally, Code Nasher, I think this to me is a clear five. Reason being, I think your setup, you don't have all the tools and you really science the heck out of your setup, which you have. And making a bread like this with the tools that you have, uh, just perfect. So you get a five uh, from me. Absolutely, totally agree. Also seeds inside, so it's so nice, really delicious. It's in the dough and, and the fermentation is great as well. Was there any whole wheat here? Let me just put this uh, on here. Ah, he, he didn't inc didn't include that. I think it does. Some... And if, if it's a substantial amount of a whole weight, then it's even better. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Code Nasher. Great submission here. Next up, we get a submission from Shane. Delicious looking bread, and look at that picture. At those picture skills. Misters. <laughs> and this is even uh, better because Shane wrote, this is a fan favorite. And as far as I could see, Shane, you are selling those breads in your micro bakery. Mm -hmm. So this is an actual bread sold in a store somewhere. I think it's so cool to see all the micro bakeries just popping up everywhere. I don't know if this is a micro bakery, but but yeah, I just uh, came to think about it. But the crumb looks great. Absolutely. It's amazing, right? That suddenly there are those small micro bakeries and they start selling sourdough bread, bread like this. Imagine you would find, have you ever seen sourdough bread like this in a store somewhere? No. Nope. No, me neither. <laughs> I would totally buy this bread. So thoughts? Absolutely. I think it's great, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, really cool how, how we can see the um, the shaping in in this bread. Uh, it, it's so clear uh, to see how it was shaped, how it was rolled uh, around the um, the usual tight part uh, on the right hand side. It's it's a little bit tighter towards the the top, I think. Um, there's usually a tighter spot uh, when you do the roll shaping, um, but it's also super open and evenly open. Many, many, uh, many places. Uh, a little tight along the bottom crust, I think, on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it looks great. It's it's even and uh, and open in my opinion. Great bread. I don't have much to add, Matthias. I think this is looking great. And this is probably also the bread that most of the people would love to buy in a store where the crumb isn't too wild. It's a mixture of open, but not too wild. So I think this is yeah, a great submission. Absolutely. And okay. also the aesthetics was just mind-blowing. And a little blowout from, um, yeah. So maybe try a little deeper scoring uh, next time. That might help, not sure. But uh, yeah, it, it, it tore a little bit um, across the, the main score. Yeah. Yeah, Sean is saying nice double ear. And um, yeah, so true. You can even see a ear on both sides. Good job. I would say okay. 75. That's my, my score. You, yours is 4.75. We still need to ask the community, though, what they think. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so who, who agrees with Matthias on 4.75? Now is the time to place your vote. One more time, the bread from Shane uh, here. 
And Shane, if you read this, please do uh, also drop a link to your micro bakery as a comment so that the other people who are just watching this can go to the community tab and find your micro bakery. That would be awesome. One more time from Shane. Four out of five people agreeing with you, Matthias. 4.75, 4.9. I'm raising the, uh, I mean, five is hard it's hard to get to five as a baker than to from from a, for a home baker so in the previous small home oven experiment no example it's uh, it's easier to get the high high grade because it's a harder setup so five is really really good so everybody is in the area of four to five and um now it's my time to vote So if you're running a mac micro bakery, let me put it this way. Um, I think if you just make one bread at the same time, then I would give you a 4.5. But since you're running a micro bakery and you make multiple at the same time, you have all that time pressure. You need to focus on baking in an economic way. Uh, so you can't wait for too long and so on. For a bakery style bread, you are getting uh, five out of five from me, Shane. For a homemade bread, you would get a 4.5. But seriously, if I could find a bread like this somewhere, I would so totally buy it. That's a good point. Absolutely. <laughs> we can't use the most expensive flour either. True, right? You need to find a good balance between everything. OK, the last submission now coming up from Terran. Terran. Brett number one and Brett number two here from Terran. One more time, the picture is Terran number one, Terran number two. And here the recipe, moin. Oh, by the way, bonus points for saying moin. That's the way how we greet people in the Hamburgs. <laughs> so, so glad that you, uh, that you copied that, Terran. 70% hydration, around 20% started, 10 grams of salt, baked in a Dutch oven. Some challenges I face are high altitude and very dry climate. This is the first time I didn't get an ear since I've been using your method. Wondering if I didn't score at the right angle. It looks great. I love the artistic style and the, the I get this, yeah, it's blue. True, right? Cold, high. How did you? <laughs> that's, awesome. that's awesome, right? Isn't it? Yeah, and it's a great design as well. There's some really artistic scoring there. The only thing Taryn is saying, not that much of an ear. I don't know. So my answer to this would be, I don't know if it's even possible that much with this style of bread, because what you're doing is, as far as I can see, you're scoring all around, right? You're scoring, scoring all around the bread, and this means that of course you're creating a lot of weak spots all around the bread and you will never get as much of a big ear in comparison to if you just have one central score, I think. Because of course the bread is going to rise everywhere where you scored. Um, maybe a little bit more, but I'm not sure if there's actually a limitation to just the way this wool looks. I think this is a common way to score for to get the like great scoring and great patterns. Uh, and I, I don't think I've ever seen a, an air uh, with this type of scoring. So uh, that's the whole point, right? You won't get the flat canvas for, for your art. And so okay. I think that's the only great thing here. What do you think about the, the crumb, Matthias? Would you say it's over-fermented, under-fermented? It does not look over-fermented, uh, I think. No, I think it looks pro properly fermented. Absolutely. And That's good, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, you might have been able to let it ferment longer, uh, but then the scoring would have been harder. It's much easier to... to... Did you have a guest, uh, like a scoring uh, expert from... Uh, from uh, True. Oh. Yes, from, uh, from the Proof Bakery. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think she said something along the lines of, you want to under-ferment it to make it easier to score just a little bit. Yeah. 
But yeah, I, I think the I think the fermentation looks great. Uh, I would have pushed it longer, but if the if the point is to get a great scoring and uh, this artistic style, then it's perfect. I think so too. Let's ask the community what you think. So, what do you think about this bread made by Taryn? Taryn Laird. One more time. One to two. Uh, sorry, one to five. What is your score? <laughs> Four out of five. Three point nine. Four point seven. Um, Right, who cares about an error? You don't care about an error when you make this bread. That's it's not the points. Then you would score. I think so too. So yeah. I think so too. So what's your score, Matthias? Um I think I will say uh four uh on this one. Uh it's a great design. What could improve it a little bit is um to get a more to get more contrast in the scoring, but I'm not I'm not quite sure how we would even do that without flour, because normally when you do these designs you have flour on top to to get better contrast. So that actually makes me want to to raise the scoring more for points than five maybe. <laughs> and at least you have some beautiful blisters as well. Uh, they look just stunning and blisters on top of the breads. That's something. At least I don't often see. Uh, maybe because it's just an ear and and belly, and bell the bellies don't have blisters, right? So, so yeah, that doesn't matter. <laughs> I totally agree. So if you wanted to have a more visual pattern, which I think would make sense for this style of bread, you would have to say goodbye to the blisters on top. You would need to use a little bit of rice flour. Um, so I think you you combine the best of both worlds by having blisters and a beautiful design. But of course, then the beautiful design isn't perfect because there's no rice flour on top of it. So you might want to decide what in which direction you want to go. And do you want to have more of an ear? Do you want a more of a scoring pattern? Or you just do like you do, where you combine the best out of both worlds. And I think there, there is not too much to improve. I would also give you a four um, out of five for this bread, Terran. It's so shiny and it's beautiful. It's it's just great as the, as as it is. Uh, I, I like more oven spring, but uh, that, that's just my uh, my style. Yeah. So brilliant blisters. Uh, yeah. Look at the crust. Don't see much to improve on this one. I also came to think about something. If you want more contrast but no flour, you could try to score deeper, less details. And deeper cuts because then they, 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 the cuts would open more and it would reveal like the the, the, the lighter parts uh, beneath. That's actually a valid point, yes. Mm -hmm. But then you might also want to go for a stiffer dough, right? Because if it's too highly hydrated, it would be difficult to score so deeply, or? Good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. It would be hard to control it, I think, uh, how it spreads. It might be easier with a stiffer dough. I just wanted to put one more comment here uh, by Danville. And the question was, how did we decide on which bread to go for today? I mean, there have been so many more submissions, but just looking at the time, we can, of course, talk all of them. So what uh, I asked you to do is to submit the bread on the post and then upvote. And we've just been looking at the top upvoted posts. I know that's a little bit of unfair also if you submit it a little bit later, uh, but I don't have a better idea for now how to do this. If you have a better idea, please do drop a comment in the comment section that we can find a better way on how to manage just show you a bread show because I think that would be awesome if yeah if we can just find a better system because sometimes also YouTube hides some of the comments and things like that. Any closing remarks from you, Matthias? This was the last submission. I've seen so many great uh, bakes today. Uh, so, so yeah, it, it, it's been so fun to to join in and uh, review the breads and talk about them and see all your great comments. If you could the, give the bakers one tip, one closing tip, what would you tell them? I think that would be just bake more, bake a lot, 
because experience is the single most important ingredient in achieving what you want in my experience at least i have seen my breads improve uh, gradually so and, and experience is the answer to that I, I changed my flour at one at one time. I found this great Manitoba Italian, or it's actually Canadian flour, but it's uh, it's an Italian brand from Caputo, and uh, that was that was mind blowing for me. It really made my bread uh, uh, better. So flour and and experience, maybe <laughs> that's my most important tip. I totally agree. So flour learn how the how the dough feels like don't use a stand mixer at the start just understand the different stages that your dough is in and just experience yeah <laughs> most boring tip yeah you just need to bake 100 more breads before you can do mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> it's hard but yeah and i think you've been such a great host matthias also when i was out you just uh run this show it's time for you to also open up your uh own youtube channel at some point one more time here, Matthias Fools Crump on Instagram. Please check him out. Um, he is a baker to watch out for. I think your Instagram is soon going to explode and you're going to be the next big thing on the Instagrams. <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much for having me. It was really great. So you stay on here for a few more seconds. I'm going to be submitting, uh, I'm going to be stopping the live stream now. Thank you, everybody, for the submissions. Uh, thanks for the great comments, the great uh, discussion. It has been a blast again. And yes, there is going to be another Show Your Bread episode soon. I don't have the date yet, but I'm going to be announcing it, of course, on the community. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Take care and see you soon. Thank you one more time, Matthias. Bye-bye. <laughs>